Honourable Jonathan Coleman. That was a very entertaining speech. The only problem was that none of it was true. And Grant Robertson, he's just put in a very good audition as leader of the Labour Party. I do have to hand it to him. That was a lot better than his leader managed this afternoon. But quite frankly, trying to actually put up uh, that as debate when all it amounts to is a scurrilous attack on the Prime Minister, well, I think Grant Robertson, I hate to say it, but he's actually better than that. And he knows that. Because what he knows, Mr Speaker, is that the Prime Minister acted quickly, he acted decisively, he called for an investigation, the matter was dealt with very quickly, uh, a Minister sadly resigned on Friday, but in the end David Henry said he couldn't take the inquiry any further. And I know those members over there will have read the inquiry, but it's spelt out quite clearly there. I'd also like to say, Mr Speaker, that no one in this House uh, takes any pleasure in what's happened over the past few days. It's a very sad turn of uh, affairs. Uh, Peter Dunn, uh, a member who's served here for many, many years, well known to the House, uh, a man of honour, and he cannot explain his behaviour either. And uh, what's gone on, I think, is beyond explanation. But sadly, uh, a career of service to New Zealand has been brought to an end. And I even, Mr Speaker, forgive Mr Dunn for handing me the wrong speech to read on his behalf while he skived off to a school prize giving one night. But that is a long time ago. But Mr Speaker, Labor can't have it always. And you know, uh, David Shearer today, he's calling for uh, greater emphasis on privacy, talking about PRISM. He's very, very concerned about the implications of that for uh, New Zealanders' privacy, and privacy is a serious matter. But then in the next breath, he is wanting all these emails tabled and released. And uh, his naivety, I think, has been highlighted in the Dominion editorial this morning, which just shows how naive David Shearer is being in calling for that. But it's even worse than that, Mr Speaker, because actually David Shearer has been conned by Winston Speakers. He's taken the sucker punch. He has been, he's been convinced by Winston Peters... Winston Peters? <laughs> well, Winston Peters thinks he's the Speaker. By Winston Peters to put... Well, the Speaker thinks Winston Peters is the Prime Minister. He has been convinced by David Shearer to put in a letter to the Privileges Committee, and he wants uh, Peter Dunn put under loath, oath and all those, all those emails and uh, his phone calls to be revealed in their full entirety. Well, Mr Speaker, <clears throat> there are some serious implications of that. So if you look at the sad case of Phil Goff, a member who has been leaking sensitive... MFAT and Defence Force documents for a long, long time. And I would love to see Mr Goff's emails. I'd love to see his phone logs because I'd like to know what conversations he had when he leaked pages from the Court of Inquiry relating to the death of a New Zealand soldier, when he leaked those to the media. And I think if David Shearer was not working to a double standard, he would say to Mr Goff, you know, in the interest of this new age of transparency that Labor are calling for, please table your phone logs, please table your emails and their contents so we can know where Phil Goff gets his information from. Because when Phil Goff uh, when Phil Goff undermines national security, when he undermines the morale of the Defence Force, he knows that as he is, he is doing, the New Zealand Defence Force and the people of New Zealand a great disservice. But there's more coming for Phil Goff because, of course, about a year ago, Phil Goff tabled leaked documents from MFAT. He tabled pages from a Cabinet paper, and I want to know who Phil Goff's source was. And I'd love to see the content of Phil Goff's emails. I'd love to see his phone logs. But of course, Phil Goff thinks it's OK for Peter Dunn to be called to account under oath, to be, to be made to table his emails, to be able, made to table the full content. But Phil Goff never will. And of course, when David Shearer actually connects the, his neurons together, gets some synapses firing, he will realise that what he's calling for in this House will have very, very grave consequences. And we heard from Winston Peters today, and of course we all know about the 2008 Privileges Committee hearing, where uh, Winston Peters 
was uh, found guilty at that hearing. Wouldn't we love to see the full content of his phone logs? Wouldn't we love to see the content of his emails? Because I think that would be very, very revealing. So David Shearer and Winston Peters should be very wary of what they ask for, because if they're going to hold Peter Dunn to one standard, they will have to hold Phil Goff, the MFAT leaker who has undermined the morale of MFAT and the NZDF to exactly the same standard. And I think it's really going to unravel pretty badly. Because someone with the ethics of Phil Goff, who will seek out leakers and, and who will go out there and publish that information, they will not like to be held accountable. And you can tell by the fact that Phil Goff is raving and shouting, that he's lost it here in the House, that a raw nerve has been hit because Phil Goff is the biggest leaker in the New Zealand Parliament. Of that, there is no doubt. And his day, well, no, no, we're, talk, we're talking information leaks. So I can tell you, Phil Goff's day of accountability is coming. And I would love Phil Goff, if he believes in transparency, to get up in this House and tell us who person A is. Tell us who his contact is, who leaked the information to him. <clears throat> and I think you'll find He's very loath to do that because transparency goes both ways. Ministerial resignations, MP resignations go both ways. So when you're calling for Peter Dunn to be put under oath, be prepared for Phil Goff to go under oath as well because you might not like what you find. And you can tell by Phil Goff yelling and shouting and raving here uh, the barrage of completely non-witty interjections that he knows we are on to him and his day is coming very, very soon. Of course, there is a police complaint against Phil Goff as well, and we greatly uh, await the uh, police complaint. Yeah, apparently someone's made a police complaint because Phil Goff leaked those details of the dead soldier to the media. Uh, it was a court of inquiry. It was a suppressed report. A point of order. Mm. Point of order. Mr oh, Speaker, I think you were in the House when the Minister had to withdraw and apologise for making an allegation that was not true and I found offensive and he's just done it again and I'll ask you again to ask him to withdraw and apologise. I'll hear the member. Well, <coughs> no, Mr Speaker, you know that that's a debating point. It's not something he can take offence of. I could say I take offence at the way he characterises some of the things order, I do. Order, order, order. Um, I, I'm, I, I don't believe I was here when that, the, the decision that the member refers to was made, but I think we can be more productive and just move on with the debate. Jonathan Cobb. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the Speaker ruled last Thursday that the, mem the Minister making that complaint had committed a breach of standing orders and making an offensive statement, the more so because it's not true. I ask you to do what the Speaker did last week in exactly the same circumstances. Require the Minister to withdraw and apologise because I take offence at the untruth that he's just told. Well, order. Now, order. Uh, all members are honourable members, and the member has taken offence. The member will withdraw and apologise and continue with his speech. I withdraw and apologise. Now, to get back to the facts, what Phil Goff did... Order. Took... Order. Phil Goff... Order. Now, the member has just breached standing orders himself by inferring that that member did something that isn't acceptable. So the member will now withdraw and apologise. Withdraw and apologise. Jonathan Coleman. <laughs> Thicker skin than Phil Goff. Now what Phil Goff did, OK, so Phil Goff took a suppressed report. So the coroner had suppressed this court of inquiry. It was a court of inquiry relating to the death of a New Zealand soldier in Afghanistan. Phil Goff broke that suppression order and he took pages from that inquiry and emailed them to the media. And that is now subject to a police complaint. But not only did he do that, a year ago he took sensitive MFAT documents and cabinet papers and released them publicly. So I want David Shearer to go out and say to Phil Goff, Phil, we want, yeah, Phil Goff, we want Peter Dunn to table his emails, we want transparency, but to do that, so we don't look like hypocrites, we need you, Phil, to table all your emails and to make available your phone records in exactly the same way we are uh, calling for. So you see, when you tie all this together, you go back to that Dominion Post uh, editorial today, what you can see is the Prime Minister has acted very, very decisively and quickly. He's uh, basically 
you know, Dunn was gone that day. It didn't happen in the Clark era. I mean, it took years and police investigations, incredible pressure to get rid of Taito Philip Field. But John Key, a man of high integrity, he acts in a totally different manner. He acts decisively. And if Phil Goff and uh, David Shearer et al really want to get to the bottom of this in the way they say, all they have to do is get their mate Winston Peters to publish the emails which he claims he has, but of course we don't reckon he has them. But once he tables them, we'll all know what uh, David Shearer thinks he wants us to know. We want to see Phil Goff's emails and his phone calls, but most of all, I would love to see the emails relating to David Shearer's secret bank account, because this is a man constantly calling for transparency, and we wouldn't want to see hypocrisy in this House. So the summary of it is, be careful what you ask for. It really could backfire. There are no winners in this. I feel sorry for Peter Dunn. He was a man of integrity. I still believe he is. Uh, he's had some sort of uh, very unfortunate brain expo explosion, and I don't think it's reflecting very well at all on David Shearer in his ill-judged, crazy calls for a total change to accepted parliamentary <laughs> practice. Mr Speaker. This debate has now concluded. Item 6, Honourable Jerry Brownlee.